Hey, it's Chris. Hey Chris, uh, we have quorum at this point. Uh, eight of the eleven TSC members are here, so we're we're ready to move forward when you are. All right, I'm dialing into the phone. Hello. Chris, are you there? Hi. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Um, so we have we have quorum at this point when you're you're ready to move forward. Yeah, I'm just getting hooked up. I I couldn't hear any sounds. Gotcha. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you, Chris. Uh, technology sucks. Just leave it at that. <clears throat> Bluetooth never connects to what you want it to connect to. Okie dokie. Um, there's the agenda there. Okay. So we have form. Is that right? Yes, we do. So uh, first step is action item review. That'll be followed by is um, Bishop on the call? Yeah, I, I see Bishop on the call. Yes. Okay. I don't hear him, but hopefully he'll speak up when he's uh, reviewing his proposal. Um, so he's got a proposal for <clears throat> another project to be incubated. Um, uh, have a hackathon sort of readout. We can, you know, spend a few minutes just talk, talking about the hackathon and planning for the next one, and then we'll have work group updates um, at the end, unless there's any other. Agenda items people want to add? Okay, let's get going. So, um, <laughs> TSC representation policy draft, that was me, and it's not done. So, 20 lashes with a wet noodle for me. Um, Dave, are you on the call, and how are you doing with the white paper? Yeah, hi, Chris. I'm here. Um, yeah, so, uh, well, so the, the working group, um, you know, we've been spending a lot of time, everyone's working really hard, we've, we've made some very good progress on, on the working draft. Uh, if you take a look at the, uh, the working draft, you can see that, you know, we've committed a bunch of updates to it. Um, and uh, Chris, I, I know you had mentioned that there's a board meeting coming up Monday, and, you know, we, we did our best to, to kind of get through the whole thing where we've, we felt, um, you know, it was a, a level of quality that should uh, that, that's good enough for a draft one. But you know, we there's still a couple of sections that we wanted to to spend a little bit more time on. And also, okay. you know, we want we we want to make sure that uh, the TSC has a chance to review, you know, what we've put together uh, before it goes in front of the board um, for for feedback and comment. So so you know, again, we. 
we've got a, a, a lot of good progress in there. What our, what our goal now is to actually, you know, finish finish that draft, those, those last final sections, and generate the PDF that we're going to call, you know, draft 1.0. We're going to do that by, you know, end of day on Wednesday. Um, and hopefully everyone will get a chance to, you know, read through it. And, and maybe you can put us on the agenda for next Thursday to just spend a little bit of time, you know, talking about it or if anyone has any wants to bring up any feedback in the, in the group uh, on, on what was put in there. But, um, but you know, that's basically where we are. You know, we got through a lot of, the, you know, the rationale. You know, we removed a lot of the implementation details that were in the earlier draft um, and, uh, and just putting in the final touches on a couple of other sections. Um, and then, you know, hopefully we'll, everyone will be able to have a chance to take a look at it and, and uh, start providing some feedback. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Lost my place again. Um, next up was uh, setting up the sawtooth-like repos, and I see that's been done. Thank you. Um, yep, Mr. Jones got us set up, so thanks for that. Awesome. Um, I think there's, you know, a little bit of, you know, things. I, I, you know, I added the incubation and the pull request to all the repos, but. Um, it'd be, I think, good if we could take a pass through and just make sure that we clean up stuff that specifically sort of references Intel. I mean, it's not, a, you know, obviously, you know, we're very thankful for the contribution, but, uh, you know, I think it's, it's important that we try and sort of make this about Hyperledger, right? So um, if we can do that. Yeah, we can take a look through there. I think uh, I think what he did is he just pulled the, all the repos over as is from the, from the Intel right. project. So right. should should, yeah. it, should it be renamed um, Hyperledger Sawtooth? Um, no, 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 no. The name is the name is fine. It's just that there was a few references to Intel in some of the readme's and stuff that we probably want to point to the Hyperledger project and, and, and mailing this and so forth. Yeah, I'll go take a look at uh, your your pull request, and uh, uh, we'll get somebody to look through and, and filter out the docs for for things that. That yeah. uh, aren't relevant in Hyperledger, and 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 then the other thing that that struck me is I know that you know um, I mean you guys did a really nice job with the, with the documentation and it's out there under Intelledger, GitHub IO, and so forth. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, if well, so I, I know that that uh, on the Fabric project we're also interested in. Using a similar approach of using uh, GitHub Pages to publish the the docs, so I think we just need to come up with a strategy that we can do for all the Hyperledger docs consistently. I think that would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be good too. It's it's I think it's convenient for people when they they come land on the the GitHub site that they can they can follow that auto-generated link to see all the documentation. So I'm pretty sure we can make just like a, a top-level docs repo or something that can point out to uh, each incubated project. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be good. So it's just something I think, it, it, I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's not on the critical path certainly, but uh, it's something I think we should look at. Um, yep. uh, the next item up was to create the Fabric API repo and um, and annotate the README, and that was done. Thank you, Tomas. Um, exit criteria discussion. So I, we didn't really have a, a quorum of um, uh, TSC members at the at the hackathon, so there wasn't really an opportunity for us to get together and talk about um, the exit criteria. But um, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, Todd, maybe we just need to find another doodle poll and, and see if we can't get a call going. Uh, yep. Although. Couple of weeks are going to be crazy for me because it's conference season and that OSCON and then Cloud Foundry for the next two weeks. So I'll, I'll have but a look I, to coordinate schedules. Thanks. Um, and uh, just as an FYI, um, we we had some discussion on the mailing list and also in Slack about um, you know creating. Uh, a little bit more granularity around some of our mailing lists so that we could have targeted um, uh, discussions around Sawtooth Lake, around Fabric, or just generalized, you know, technical discussion. And so 
we've created uh, some new mailing lists and um, I think Rye uh, posted those to the, the various mailing lists and also to Slack. Um, uh, Rye, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think hope I'll capture them all, but there's now a Hyperledger Fabric, a Hyperledger Sawtooth Lake, uh, a Hyperledger Announce. Oh God, what else am I missing? There was two others, right? Uh, also just a general discuss channel uh, for more broad, broad topics, not as um, deeply technical as the technical discuss list. Thanks. <clears throat> anyway, so those lists are there for subscription. Um, and again, the announced one is probably going to be the low traffic one. So if people are interested in following sort of what's going on, but without the noise of every day's pull requests and so forth, um, then uh, subscribing to announce, and that's where we should be posting, uh, you know, information about, you know, major milestones or, um, you know, published releases and, and, and that sort of thing, backward compatibility issues and so forth. Um, okay, so that's enough of that for the action items. So next up is Bishop, and he's got a proposal to incubate a project that uh, was designed to sort of exercise the hyperledger fabric. Bishop, do you want to take us through that? Yes, okay. Um, uh, hmm. yeah. uh, so I, I'm not, I don't have the screen sharing enabled, um, so I'm, I'm not sure what you guys are, what anyone is seeing. Um, the, since since a few months ago, uh, inside IBM, I'm, or I guess for my own work, actually, I started a project of creating uh, what what internally in IBM we call exercisers for uh, the Hyperledger fabric. So an exerciser is a um, it's an application or a set of applications that you know, exercise the behavior of something, but don't really represent a, a real end application. And we've been using this internally. For both for correctness checking of the hyperledger fabric as well as for benchmarking and, and performance characterization and you know characterization between different systems, uh, it's a lot of people found it useful. Uh, so I've asked, <coughs> I asked internally, <coughs> excuse me, I asked internally for permission to, uh, to to release the code, and Chris uh, suggested that I that I. Um, Make a proposal to actually include it in some way as part of the Hyperledger or, uh, or Hyperledger Fabric repository. So I created the, the proposal document that, that's out there. Um, not uh, there's been one comment on it uh, that was that was um, uh, or just a kind of a general comment. The, the the basic I mean the the basic thing that I'm proposing to add is a as I, as I said in the document, it's really kind of, uh, it's a philosophy that has an, an currently an executable specific, specification or an executable implementation of this philosophy, and that is that the, the, a good way to test these complex protocol um, uh, systems with complex protocols is to create comprehensive, highly randomized, self-checking exercisers or, or irritators, we call them sometimes as well. And so this busy work proposal has currently one of those implemented. It it has one one chain code uh, with with a, with a driver script, but it's 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 highly configurable. It's designed to allow you to test the and stretch the specification in very in in various ways. Um, the number of clients that are that are driving the network, uh, the sizes of the transactions, the sizes of the data that's being manipulated, and so on. And um, and so that I, I would just like to you know contribute this and continue to work on it. Um, I think it and I you know I I think that uh, in the hope that people will find will find it useful. Uh, for example, it would be I think some of these some of these tests would be very good to include as uh, performance regressions <coughs> in the continuous integration infrastructure, so that we would so, so we make sure that that pull requests aren't aren't coming in that are that are somehow impacting performance. It's also this the tests even so far have also um, you know helped uncover a lot of issues um, in not just not just bugs but really more even specification issues of, of what the hyperledger fabric is supposed to do you know based on the understanding of the of the exercises 
sizer versus what um, um, you know we actually observe. The I guess it, it, the the implementation currently it's it um, the, the the chain codes are in Go. The drivers are in Tickle. That just happens to be my my personal uh, favorite programming language. But there's no reason why people could not add drivers that were that were written in other languages or chain codes written in other languages. I think to me the most important thing is just again the philosophy that a place to for like-minded people to put these uh, randomized um, exercisers uh, to you know to help to help uh, drive the the correctness and performance of the hyperledger fabric. I guess that that's all. That's the, my, the end of my remarks. Thanks. Uh, just curious, could you uh, maybe relate it to something like uh, Load Runner, or um, maybe talk a little bit more about about the uh, how you would create a, a workload to drive through there? I'm, so I'm not. I'm not familiar with Load Runner. Um, the how do you create a workload? Um, I, so it, I, so it, I, the process is, is something like this. I guess you you think of some feature or group of features that you want to test. Um, but let's say, for example, the next one that might come come up would be something like uh, chain codes that that verify the signatures um, of of the of the, uh, the the people wanting to run them. The idea would be to create a chain code that, uh, you know, in as many different ways as possible, could exercise that that uh, that 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 feature of of checking signatures, and then and then create a, a driver to drive it, um, you know, in, in as many and again as many ways, randomized ways as possible, to try to check and hopefully hit all the corners of of those features. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I get a, a right sense of of how you see busy work being used, and so I'm getting one aspect which sounds a little bit like uh, kind of a, a code coverage kind of thing, and it also sounded like it could be used to do load generation. Is it both of those things, or or more one of them? It's 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 both it's both of those things. Um, it as a the I mean the 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 exercises that, that exist currently are um, you know they, they they pretty much run flat out so you know they, they generate a constant steady load. Uh, however, they are they are they could be configurable to you know pace the load and actually there are there are um, parameters in there that that allow you to pace the load. For example, um, you can either run you know. In transactions flat out, or you can have the exit, have the driver, you know, create a burst of say a hundred transactions, wait for them all to be committed, and then create another burst, and that that's all that's all configurable. <clears throat> I think in terms of <clears throat> in terms of benchmarks, you know, like of standard benchmarks, these sort of artificial applications may not be the best for for standard for standard benchmarks. Uh, and similarly, you know, a, a benchmark that is that is like a real app, a real blockchain application, probably isn't going to have the same kind of code coverage that one of these randomized exercisers would have. So they, you know, they can complement each other. Maybe maybe this is more like a micro benchmark or uh, something like that. Okay, and and right now is it would it be correct to think of it as it's generating parallel load? Like you, you launch a bunch of independent sockets that are simultaneously generating load, or is it? More of like a, a single threaded kind of uh, driver. It's it 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 is a multi multi threaded driver. You you specify that you specify the number of uh, clients um, and you know they, they they all run in parallel exercising. And again, this, the self checking is a really critical part of it. And what's implemented here now, every transaction the the, the chain code itself understands its context or what the what context it expects. So it checks that every transaction is being executed in the correct context. At the end of the, it checks that all the transactions get committed. It checks um, that the, all the blockchains are identical. At the end of the run, it checks there's no duplicates. So you know anything I can think of to check, I, I'm checking in there. 
as well. That right now, right now, it, it, because it's it's easiest the to set up these networks with Docker Compose, so everything is running on one system. But it it, it would be a very small modification to modify it such that the network and the driver system could be different, or even that you know even that the drivers could be running on on multiple systems if if, if that was helpful. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions for Bishop? <clears throat> so there's a, I see a question online. That, um, can this be ported to Exercise Size Sawtooth Lake? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, want, I want to say no, but 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 not in a, but not in a, in a hard sense. I mean the you know this is really what's there now is infrastructure for the hyperledger fabric. So it has the idea of a chain code in the way that the hyperledger fabric has, and the way you deploy chain codes and invoke them and so on. Um, so I mean the idea I'm I'm sure is portable, but but probably none of the code would be portable. Um, I mean unless Sawtooth Lake had that, those same kind of concepts. Okay. I don't know if yeah. uh, either Ben or Sheehan or Greg are on the on the call. Any thoughts? Uh, this has been. Uh, hope you can hear me I'm, I'm on the uh, IP network here. Um, I, I I agree with the analysis there from uh, Bishop. Um, using this uh, has been very beneficial to uh, to the fabric and uh, been able to uh, drive out a number of scenarios and uh, discover uh, a number of, of difficult bugs. Um, so either this or something similar. To, to it uh, is, is really necessary uh, for us to have a quality um, code base. So I, I, I would support this project. Okay. Thanks. Any other? Um, yeah, Bishop, I have a, just have a question. Um, so is the, um, is there a, dis it, it, this goes back to your comment about, you know, uh, Code versus concept. Um, do you have a separate document that de that describes um, conceptually what you're trying to test? Um, I mean, there's it, again. I think there's a this the kind of question that Dan was asking is this really is this about test coverage um, or is it about a canonical workload that would allow us to begin sort of unifying the two fabrics and um, identifying commonalities? It, well, it, it, I wasn't conceiving of it as the as the latter as, as a unifying thing. Um, it's more it is more about test coverage and specification, you know, elucidation of the hyperledger fabric. In terms of a, um, I mean, it, it, the, the I, I think that the the document that. Um, the proposal document is probably the highest level document that describes what what it's trying to do. the The code, or the existing code, is documented, but it's more of a, a you know, a, kind of a, a user documentation how you run it, how you you know how the chain codes work, things like that. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Um, right. So uh, there, was a, there was an online question, are results from BusyWork runs against Fabric available anywhere? There are some issues that include, um, that include uh, oops, the, the, these runs. Um, 996, it, the, is one that 
the, you'll, you'll see a lot of charts in there from data that was collected from BusyWork looking at the performance of the, the uh, crypto, I'm sorry, the, the security infrastructure, certificate infrastructure of the Hyperledger fabric. Um, let's see, a good list of common performance. So what I, I'm uh, Chris so Brown, Christopher I'm Allen is asking uh, for a good list of common performance and review criteria. Where where would that list be be put? Do you think? What, what what does that mean exactly? Well, I mean, I would just like to see like you know you you mentioned a, a whole bunch of you know things that could be generalized to apply to any uh, blockchain. So uh, if you had in the wiki sort of you know. Here are you know thirty things that I tested in sort of an, in a generic way to um, uh, that might be applicable for you know making sure that you know somebody who does say a Sawtooth Lake uh, list you know might go oh yeah I, we we've got twenty five of those but those five that you listed there we didn't think about so we now you know we can add them in um, and then you know one of the the big the the discussions in the architecture group is around um, uh, you know different um, performance characteristics of different uh, consensus uh, algorithms, and at some point we're going to need to start you know talking about okay so uh, Intel Ledger with the the default consensus mechanism is you know for these sizes of federations and we've tested it with eight we've tested it with twelve and here's what the performance is for those stuff like that. So. So, Christopher, I, I don't disagree, but again, this is open source, so you know, this isn't the end of it. This is the beginning of it, right? If it needs to evolve to accommodate a certain set of things, we can do that. No, no, I'm, I'm just talking about. I, I, I'm not. If, I mean, long. That's longer term. I, what I'm, what I'm hoping to hear is that you know, if we can just get into the wiki, uh, you know, the the the. Thirty categories of things that he uh, is testing in um, in uh, the the fabric um, that would just be really useful to make sure that um, you know when we create similar tools for other incubated things that we we do the same. Right. Any other questions? Not. Is there any disagreement to? Adding this to the fabric. I have a question. Yep. I have a question. So, will this be added as the top level Hyperledger project or as part of the fabric? I believe that um, it's going to be integrated into the fabric. Bishop, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that the plan? I, that that that's up to I guess to you and and Ben and and uh, Shin. Because obviously, if it's going to be if if it could be used to test uh, every implementation of the chain, including sort of like and other potential future proposals, well, then obviously it's a top level. If not, then it probably should be part of the uh, fabric. I think, as Bishop said, that m most of the code is not necessarily generalizable to other, I mean, it's specific to how the fabric works. But um, that isn't to say that we couldn't take some of the design aspects of it and develop something as, you know, intended to be more general purpose. I mean, once it's in, it's you know we can fork it into a separate repo and work on it independently. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So once again, any any objections to incubating this in the fabric? I'm hearing none, um, so I guess that means it's approved. So uh, we can record that. Thank you. And um, 
Bishop, why don't you work with Ben, Sheehan, and Greg and see about getting that in integrated. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, next up is the hackathon readouts and feedback. <clears throat> um, I'll, I'll just start with I thought that, you know, once again, it was a good opportunity for everybody to get together. Um, Todd, I'm not sure of the actual turnout and, you know, if we had a recorded number of actual people in attendance, but it seemed like about 60 again. Yeah, I was going to say about 65. It was really strong turnout. 65, great. And, um, you know, so we had we had really good turnout. Um, uh, there was, I think, lots of good collaboration. The, uh, the guys from Consensus and Block Apps came and we were talking about integrating the EVM into Sawtooth Lake and into the fabric. So there was some, I think, really, really good uh, collaboration going on there. Uh, discussion about, you know, different approaches that might be taken and so forth. Um, and but just you know again sharing what each of these things is all about I think that's that's it's a, it's an important step um, to getting better understanding across the different projects um, so that was great and then we had um, work group meetings for identity and architecture and I'll leave that to Chris and uh, uh, and to Ram to sort of give a an update you know coming out of that but it seemed like <clears throat> Pardon me. It seemed like those workgroup meetings went really well. Um, uh, also, and then we had, um, uh, you know, we had some ongoing work. I know between Sheehan and and uh, and Tamash um, on doing the sort of the last leg of bringing over the the code from digital assets um, and getting that uh, repost uh, set up. There's, I think, still a little bit of work to do, but it's getting there. Um, I think the last leg is getting the continuous integration stuff uh, integrated, but we're really waiting for Jenkins on that. Um, and then uh, there was a, a, a table of people working on, you know, their first pull request and fixing bugs or writing chain code and Morali uh, from IBM was, was with that uh, group. And, and I think there was, uh, seemed, seemed to be a lot of good progress was made there as well. So, uh, and certainly we had a bump in the number of uh, contributors, so that's that's a good thing. Um, and there was discussion about uh, a, a possible uh, project, which uh, I think is going to be brought forward in the next week or so. So um, I, I think all in all, you know, from my perspective, it was great. We had T-shirts, yay, uh, which I think were very well received. And uh, so thank you to uh, Todd and, and the team for pulling that together. And uh, I'll leave it next to Chris and he can talk about the identity work group uh, meetings uh, that we had on Thursday. Chris? Thank you. So um, uh, basically on uh, Thursday we had uh, the face-to-face -face for the identity working group and I think we had about 40, 43 people, including some people who just came for the identity uh, working group um, discussion. Um, uh, I was very pleased with the, the results. Uh, we uh, have captured them in the wiki. I just posted uh, um, the raw notes uh, for the sessions are uh, off of that uh, particular um, uh, wiki page. Uh, we've decided to sort of divide our future discussions into um, uh, sort of six, seven uh, broad areas, um, one of which is uh, commons and principles, uh, federations, nature of uh, federation identity um, uh, as opposed to individual identity and, and the, uh, you know, the, the, the issues there. Uh, fiduciary code and signing is the third category. Um, dealing with identity failures, everything from you know individual key loss to you know what happens when uh, with different kinds of auditing and other things. Uh, a little bit more in depth in confidential and privacy, in particular around things like selective disclosure and confidential uh, transactions and how that applies to privacy. Uh, the sixth category is. Um, you know, how do we interact with existing identity systems, uh, the, you know, the legacy problem. 
Uh, and then finally, there was some further discussion, some discussion about a, a special category about you know visioning the future a little bit more broadly. So the plan um, uh, basically is to uh, you know uh, try to you know uh, prioritize some of these uh, topics and uh, and and you know get them into the wiki and and uh, move things forward. Uh, to that end, as an example. Um, uh, you know, we asked the uh, identity uh, team at IBM who did membership services um, uh, to um, uh, you know share with that with us a little bit more about their approach to the uh, membership services. Uh, they uh, did a human job in like a couple of hours to try to put together a little presentation for us and. Uh, uh, they presented. Uh, the goal was not so much that that would be the final presentation because it was a rush, uh, but it did allow us to ask some questions and other things. And their plan is that the next architecture, excuse me, next identity meeting, which is next Wednesday, um, uh, that we will uh, that they'll present it again, and uh, that one we will uh, share more broadly about the um, uh, how I, I identity is. Uh, Accomplished using uh, membership services. So that's it for um, uh, the identity uh, working group. All right, thanks, Chris. Rom, you on? Um, well, I can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Chris. Yes. So um, we had a very good uh, a session on of the architecture work group on uh, Friday a.m. Um, you know, uh, we had uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, of uh, turnout uh, in person in the in the room, and uh, luckily we were able to arrange a, a remote uh, call in as well. So we had a few folks join over the phone. Um, so uh, and uh, we made good progress in uh, discussing uh, the consensus module uh, layer, if you will, and uh, both in terms of the functionality of the consensus layer as well as the interface between that and the other functions uh, in the architecture. Um, so uh, we talked about uh, two different families of consensus protocol, and our ideal goal is to kind of uh, have uh, an interface that will allow both of those. Um, the notes from the meeting are posted uh, in the Google Docs, uh, and they're, they're in the Slack channel as well, if anyone is interested. Um, you know, they're kind of raw notes, but uh, hopefully uh, you know, the community can kind of help clean up uh, and make them a little better. Um, so, um, so the two uh, consensus fa families, if you will, that we talked about, one is the explicit voting BFT, PBFT style uh, family. Uh, with quorum voting and uh, the implicit voting, which is more like a lottery, so that's the proof of style and the Intel Poet style um, consensus uh, uh, protocols and algorithms, if you will. Uh, and uh, you know, so the goal was to kind of see whether we can accommodate both of those with uh, a unified uh, API uh, and um, um, and a unified uh, functional description. So some of the outstanding issues that uh, we want to address uh, in the next meeting. Uh, are, uh, so we had a very healthy discussion, but there was uh, we didn't quite converge on uh, on uh, some issues uh, like uh, whether we can uh, actually uh, agree on the results. So that is, is the consensus is going to lead to a consistent um, state of the uh, ledger, if you will, in terms of the results, uh, because there's a dependency on the smart contract layer uh, being deterministic. Um, and so whether we needed to kind of, uh, so then, then it becomes a question of what is the dependency between the consensus layer and the smart contract layer. So ideally we would want to isolate those to the extent possible. So uh, we have uh, a, a small group of volunteers who are going to flesh, flesh out some of the details in terms of how we want to uh, uh, flesh out the details on the what, the functional description of the consensus module whether it needs to uh, include some dependency on the uh, smart contract layer, what those need to be. So we have a, 
a small subset of volunteers who kind of uh, decided to work offline uh, and come back with a proposal that we will look at in our next meeting. Our next meeting will be on uh, um, about two weeks from now, uh, Wednesday, 25th. Um, so the only thing I'd like to add is Vitalik did not show up for our main session, but he did come after, and we had uh, a smaller subset of us uh, had a good discussion with him, and he uh, said he would volunteer some of the Ethereum folks uh, to come participate in our architecture discussion. So looking forward to having their point of view as well, um, and, or, especially on some other topics like the relay, uh, because we one of the one of the other issues that we have uh, kind of lined up with the architecture work group is the interworking between ledgers, um, and uh, you know it'll be interesting to get their input as well. Uh, starting with interworking with Ethereum, but uh, you know the same model we should use for any interworking between ledgers. That's uh, pretty much all I had. I can do it. Thanks, Ram. Awesome. So, um, any other thoughts from anyone else that attended the, the hackathon? Yeah, I wasn't able to uh, make it there myself. This is Dan, but we were able to send a few of our our developers, and they they had a really productive time there. And um, thanks to uh, the consensus guys for um, putting in some thoughts to help get a uh, kind of a form of integration between. Um, a couple of, of blockchains that way. So what they they hacked up was um, uh, some communication between an Ethereum chain and a Sawtooth chain. And mm -hmm. in order to keep things constrained for the the hackathon, what they did was just a, a little game, and it allows you to uh, I guess uh, guess the value of uh, uh, Gets the value at an Ethereum address, and then uh, it's able to go out and uh, validate that against the, the Ethereum chain. So uh, that code is uh, in a in a repo right now that we uh, we plan to get uh, pushed up into uh, into the the Sawtooth stuff over in the Hyperledger um, uh, GitHub. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Any other thoughts on the hackathon? I mean, one of the things that you know I, I'd like to get a sense from from people is um, personally, I think they're worthwhile. I think it's important whenever you start something new that you know people get an opportunity to get together, meet face to face, you know, have a beer, you know, in the evening, uh, you know, and get beyond the you know the fact that you know, some of us are fierce competitors. Um, because in the context of this work here, we're, I think, trying to do our best to, to collaborate um, and, uh, you know, put a lot of those kinds of things aside. So I think that that is uh, an important part of it. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, I think, you know, I might like to see a little bit more hacking and a little bit less, uh, of, you know, just, just the talking, guy. but they're both important. They're both important. Um, but um, I mean, what, what what do people think? Is it because I think you know the, the 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 thinking that I had was we would do this for you know three four months and and then sort of take another think. But um, I'd like to get a sense from from people as to and again you know one of the things that I'm a little bit concerned about is is you know the the TSC isn't uh, actually attending these, which I think is something that you know we should be trying to to do. Um, but um, you know, what, what what do people think? Are these valuable to um, you know that we should continue? Because I think uh, the, you know the next item was going to be Todd potentially proposing that we have another one in June. Um, so uh, and probably on the on the on the West Coast, uh, since we've had two in New York City, we'll probably have one around San Francisco. But um, you know, what do people think? Is this a valuable thing? Is it is it a waste of time? Is it yeah, what what could we do to make them better? Hey, uh, um, hey Chris, this is Morali from DTCC. Hey, Morali. So yeah, so I would say these sessions are are really are, are are really helpful, and you know, sort of the I think it's in the it's in the hyperledger 
in the main pages that you know you know you know part of these sessions is you know having these work groups is great but the other part like you said is it's 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 the code that should speak and i think ddcc believes in that and i would like to thank uh, ibm and all the folks there who are more than willing to help us to get up to speed so from our perspective these sessions are immensely helpful to connect with the folks who are part of this uh, hyperledger fabric and other than you know other than participating in these work group sessions we look forward to contributing in code and you know like it says right let the code speak so i would say immensely helpful and you know we should have this um, we, we should have this going on a on a monthly or a bi monthly basis okay thank you any other thoughts can we do it on the west coast next time yeah, I think it'll be left coast, uh, the next one. Um, uh, Todd, I think we had a couple of offers out there, but um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so, so uh, Chris, this has been, I, 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 um, I can speak up from my my experience in the past three sessions um, you know from IBM uh, going there uh, we spent a lot of time on fabric but at, at meetings like this it really opened my eyes to look at uh, other technologies from from other um, code bases especially the little group that I participate in a couple of uh, tables that we have there involving folks uh, from ethereum uh, and uh, and uh, saw to uh, Intel folks um, and talk to them about uh, potential uh, integration or collaboration and you know self discovery that you know, we we also uh, need to do things a little bit different in order to allow us blocking in uh, things like EVM for example uh, or or poet uh, so you know there are changes that that needed to be able to uh, allow this kind of integration uh, to, to happen easily because you know today it's quite difficult um, and also you know talking to to folks especially uh, Sean from uh, from Sawtooth project um, we, we quickly realized that uh, protocol is what we need to, to start from uh, even though you know we start from two different projects but the messages that we send between components uh, for example, to to create a transaction um, are, are quite similar. Uh, so perhaps we sh we should start from that and and document that uh, for a hyperledger project. Uh, and 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 who knows? Maybe we could propose that as a a blockchain standard uh, messaging protocol. Um, whether it's a working group or or subgroup, I have some feedback from. Um, from uh, Chris Allen and uh, and from Tomas uh, that, that it should be a, a, a subgroup of the architecture group that that is fine I, I just want to gather some folks to start hammering on this and see if we come can come together with a uh, common protocol uh, between different uh, different projects so I think it's very very helpful in for, for, for me personally Thanks, Ben. Other thoughts? Hello, this is Primrose speaking. Hi, Primrose. Hi. I know we tried once to get some, some remote, I think the very first time, to get some remote access working, and it didn't really work out, but it might be good to keep trying to see what's actually possible, because it's not possible for most of us to turn up. So if it's going to be every month, you're actually going to start missing out on a lot. Yeah, so um, remote participation <laughs> would be a little bit awkward because it's not like, uh, you know, it, it, I mean, I, I suppose we could try it for some of the work group meetings, um, uh, but the way that these things have been configured, it's all in one big room. It's kind of noisy. I mean, we did have a breakout room this time. Um, uh, so, you know, that might have worked out, but in the past it was this one big room and um, you know, there's a lot of socialization going on in addition to, you know, people sort of working heads down in addition to whatever 
um, work group meetings were going on. So I'm not sure that it necessarily lends itself to remote uh, participation. Um, you know, we can uh, we can certainly find ways of maybe doing a better job of leveraging Slack to you know sort of keep a, a running commentary in Slack about you know what uh, the discussion topics are and and to have sort of the back channel discussion on Slack or on IRC. You know, a lot of times people use IRC for this. Another tool that people use is uh, Etherpads. I know in uh, OpenStack they use Etherpads for that, and that enables people to <clears throat> sort of participate remotely. Um, but again, um, you know, you know, we, we we can certainly try, but I'm just not sure that it necessarily lends itself to that kind of remote participation. Chris, um, yeah, this is Chris Allen. I've had. Uh, some good success in the past with uh, a one or two day, I would suggest one to start, uh, remote hackathon. So you pick a day, you deliberately do not make it face to face, but you leave like a, uh, uh, you know, a, a hangout or some kind of uh, uh, easier full, you know, where everybody can host type of uh, video. Um, mm. And everybody just sort of commits, hey, we're going to spend the day, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, Europe to to Japan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you know, online, trying to help each other, um, uh, trying out different things, asking questions, and knowing that at any point you can basically you know pop into the into the hangout. Um, unfortunately, WebEx and some of those tools don't work great for it. It needs to be something that's a little bit more open uh, video. But it, I, I've had good results with it. Yeah. That might not be a bad idea to try out. Um, you know, we could certainly think about that. I know there's been a lot of travel, and this is conference season. We might, um, you know, maybe we could uh, make make do with something like that, uh, even more near term. Uh, other thoughts? Good idea, Chris. Thanks. Perhaps beneficial if we would uh, have a, a, reg a regular schedule for these face-to-face me uh, -face meetings, um, so that people who are traveling to these meetings from far abroad can plan accordingly. Yeah, if, if we had a, a, a September one picked out now, then we might be able to get some of the international people or or something of that nature. Whereas, um, you know. I mean, I, I like the idea of a June uh, West Coast. It'd be certainly super easy for me. On the other hand, I'm looking at my June schedule and going, "Oh my gosh, you know, you're, you know, it's 80% likely you're going to collide with one of my other commitments." <laughs> um, so the farther out you can plan these, the better. I think I think everybody agrees with that. You know, these have been well. The first one was obvious. Then the second one, you know, we sort of said, "Oh my God, we have to schedule another one," and it, you know, they, they creep up pretty fast. Um, you know, we could, you know, we could think about, you know, doing the next one maybe in July and doing a virtual one sometime in between, or maybe multiple virtual ones. Um, I kind of like that idea, and then that gives people a little bit more time to plan. Although July again, it's summer vacation time, and you know, people in Europe are probably all going to Spain or wherever they don't live. Other people in the states will have the fourth and so forth. So, because <clears throat> I agree, Chris. I mean, my, I know my schedule in, in June is ridiculous. So we're gonna have to. Start planning this. So maybe we should do that. Maybe we should have the next one be virtual, and then we can plan something in San Francisco for maybe July. There are some other things, but um, maybe we should put up two doodle polls, Todd. Just one for the virtual, and you know, pick a couple of dates, and maybe we can have it, you know, just be a day initially, or. You know, we could hack around the clock or something like that. I don't know what we want to call it, but um, 
uh, and then another one for you know, potential dates for July and San Francisco. Sounds so good. Before the plan. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Um, all right. So where's my? Uh, so we have work group. So requirements. So um, for the next. Uh, is the work group updates, and we've heard from Rom, we've heard from Christopher, um, and and from Dave as well in, in terms of the status of those particular efforts. Um, and, you know, as many of you know, we had uh, a retirement in in our in our community, um, <laughs> and Patrick uh, has uh, has retired from Intel after uh, thirty some years, um, and so it sounds like he had a, a great career. And now he's, he's, you know, getting some well-deserved R and R, um, and uh, and and so, you know, obviously, I think uh, I'd, I'd like to personally thank uh, Patrick uh, and Absentia and Intel um, for his leadership and his efforts in getting the work, the, the requirements work, in these cases, uh, up off the ground and, and to a to a good start. Um, but obviously, with his uh, departure, we are a little bit rudderless in the requirements work group, and um, you know, so I was starting to to look around for you know who, you know, who might be willing to sort of step in and and pick up where Patrick left off, and um, and Oleg um, approached me at the at the hackathon with a lot of great ideas about how, you know, we might sort of re-energize and and refocus the requirements group and. And get that moving along to the point where we could actually bring some requirements forward to the TSC for review. So I'll, like, I'll give you an opportunity to sort of, um, you know, make the case of some of the ideas you have, and, and then. Uh, yeah. Thank to... you, Chris. Thank you. Um, I'm Oleg Abdrashitov. I'm with uh, Altoros. Uh, some of you may know me from face-to-face um, -face meetings and the hackathons. Um, the ideas are rather uh, simple. Uh, the challenge that we have, first of all, is the depth. Um, to which the use cases have been developed so far. Uh, we have uh, 33 use cases um, in our catalog, and only maybe two or three of them have uh, been developed to the template that we have. Um, most of them just uh, have been penciled in, maybe just a paragraph of text. So in my view, uh, we need to really own the use cases and uh, work them into a template. We need to normalize them. Um, so I will... Um, I've taken the initiative and I will go through use cases, uh, which I understand fully, and I will uh, make them conform to a template. Those use cases that are clearly owned by someone else, I will uh, persuade these uh, regional authors to um, rewrite them so that at the end we have a collection of use cases that all conform to the same template so that we can compare them sort of side by side so that they're normalized, so that we can uh, see common patterns in them. Um, so that's the first idea, um, to own the use cases. Um, this is the scope of the use cases that we have. Right now we have only uh, financial and non-financial, and in my view, entire industries have not been uh, covered, like uh, uh, shipping or insurance, internet of things, or uh, compliance. Um, so the idea that I have is to uh, reach out to uh, the wider audience of uh, our, our project members. We have over a thousand people on Slack. Um, I ran a, uh, a script through the emails, and there are about uh, 130 unique domain names. And if you analyze the domain names, uh, you'll find very interesting newcomers, like people from shipping, um, a marine classification company. So uh, we can reach out to them to solicit new use cases. I put out um, uh, a Google form so that we can circulate it to a wider community and solicit use cases from them. So uh, to widen the scope of use cases, um, reach out, that's, uh, that's my second idea. Um, and the third idea, um, in my view, there should be um, some kind of KPI for the group um, in the form of uh, maybe a monthly report um, and most importantly, a feedback uh, mechanism to the architecture group. The requirements need to constantly um, feed the architecture in the identity group. Um, so um, I will work with the architecture group as to the form of that report, I will work within the requirements group as well. Um, so that's my 
third idea to have some kind of uh, constant feedback and uh, in the form of a formal report. This is the new use cases that we've discovered. Those are the common patterns that we see. Um, and uh, let's see if uh, they can challenge your architectural decisions. Um, so these ideas, in my view, are um, obvious. Um, I discussed them with uh, some of the key members of the project, and within the group, I have uh, general agreement. Um, they just need to be implemented. So I will take care of um, normalizing the use cases and rewriting them to the template, working with other group members. Um, and I will ask everybody's um, um, help and support um, as to getting new use cases from, uh, from wider, uh, wider community. Um, so that's it, um, that's it for us. Um, at the last meeting, um, uh, Christopher Allen also uh, walked through um, his great contribution to the template as to the technical requirements, so we discussed that. Um, and that's, that's the state where we are with the requirements group. We, we did also talk a little bit about um, uh, the life cycle of use cases, and we basically have um, uh, three, three levels. Uh, level one, to not be intimidating, is, uh, is a relatively uh, small set of, of questions that we're asking people to, uh, to submit. Uh, Oleg has created a, uh, a Google form to make it easier for people to submit sort of the first level of that. Um, and then we have kind of an exit criteria for that those you know, have to be complete and normalized to move to the next phase, which is to really uh, fill out the requirements and such. And um, in that phase, we would really like to uh, you know, um, move to uh, uh, I mean, what we've did, what I've begun to discover that's been part of the challenge for the requirements group, and this came up at the face to face, is that some people have told me, well, you know, we have use cases, but we can't share them with you because we're under NDA with our clients. Um, so, you know, we're having some difficulty in getting some of the real nitty gritty details that we need. Um, so, the suggestion is is that you know, we'll, you know, each month or you know, we'll submit two or three that are at, you know, relatively complete stage two to the uh, TSC for them to um, reach out to the, the members uh, and their teams to, to comment on and, and, and add to. Um, but we really, you know, we're, we've, we need to, um, you know, prioritize a few of these, you know, say, Okay, here's two use cases, uh, TSC and board. You know, work with your organizations to help us uh, finish this to get these to, to level three. And that's it. Hello? I finished. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking to the mute button. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Going for about five minutes there. I, anyway, um, uh, I was just going to say, so thank you both. Um, you know, it sounds like you had some, some good discussions at the hackathon. And you know, as I was saying, you know, this is open source uh, project after all. And one of the sort of the tenets of open source is that, you know, if you have an itch, scratch it. <clears throat> And uh, you know, uh, I've you know, in sort of uh, getting you know, Chris came forward you know with the idea of the identity work group, and uh, I said, cool, let's run with that, right? Patrick came forward with the idea for a requirement to use cases working group. He did a great job. You know, if somebody has an interest, you know, and Rob came forward from an architecture perspective, same thing. Um, in in driving something, I think. You know, as long as it's within the sort of the scope of what we're all about here, I think that um, that's a good thing. And I'm, you know, I'm always, I, I look for people that are sort of self-starters and, and self-motivators in, in just my day-to-day -day, uh, job. That's the kind of, kind of individuals I like to work with. So, you know, from my perspective, I think, you know, Oleg, you've got some some good ideas here to sort of move this forward. And I mean, unless anybody has any objections, I. Right? I'd be happy to have you lead the work, the requirements group. 
Thank you. So to put that more formally, does anybody have any objections? I'm seeing a lot of plus ones on the list uh, on the chat here, but uh, I'm not hearing any uh, any objections. So Oleg, I think uh, the, the reins are yours, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you uh, on the TSC calls going forward. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Okay. So um, finally, is the CI sort of work group that really isn't a work group yet because we still don't have CI. Um, I, I hear a call from a little birdie that uh, Jenkins and Garrett are right around the corner. I've actually seen the Garrett server up. Uh, we have a little bit of transition planning for Garrett that's a little bit more um, in, involved. Um, and we probably need a little bit of training. Um, and then Jenkins, uh, I understand, is also uh, something that the uh, the infrastructure guys will be working on and getting to us very soon. Um, and so then we'll be sort of in full mode of transitioning um, over to, to use of, of Jenkins. Um, and so that would be uh, both the Sawtooth Lake, uh, you know, migrating the fabric from Travis to Jenkins, so the porting of the scripts to, to Jenkins. Um, Pardon me, and then also um, the, the the Fabric API, uh, Tomash and his team uh, had contributed, uh, and they have a bunch of Jenkins um, CI for that. So it's a matter of pulling all that together. So once we have the Jenkins server up and running, I think we can probably uh, get into full swing with uh, integration across the landscape, so that we can start working towards a consistent set of tools. Um, and uh, I think that's about it for, for that. I don't know, Todd, if you have any other updates on the uh, on, this, on the, uh, the infrastructure. No, th uh, that's really it right now. Okay. Um, so that's about all I have uh, from an agenda perspective. Unless there are other thoughts, we can give people 20 minutes back. All right, great. Well then, thanks everyone, and we'll talk to you all next week, if not in the Slack and the mailing list before then. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone.